Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In the previous episode I put a lander on the moon and so logical pro progression would be for me to now put a rover on the moon. I, that would be the sensible thing to do. The NASA progression is flyby, orbital vehicle, lander, rover and then a manned mission. Of course we've only gotten to the manned mission part once with uh, Apollo but you know uh, that is the basic progression of things. But I feel like we aren't quite getting all the science we can out of Kerbin, at, uh, Kerbin slash Earth itself, uh, not to mention the moon. Uh, and the rover wouldn't be very fruitful in terms of getting us more, more science than a lander because, well, with a real-life rover, moving a few meters might give you a very different thing. I mean, uh, it allows you to ex um, examine quite a lot of different things. But in Kerbal Space Program, with the biome system as it is, uh, moving a few meters does not do you any good. Uh, and to get to a different biome on the moon would take a journey of well, quite a substantial amount of time. And I don't think we're going to be spending that kind of time. And frankly, it would be much easier to just send a lander to each of the biomes rather than actually send a rover and drive it around between the biomes. So, there is that hitch with the way that uh, things work here compared to the way that things work in real life. But, there, I, I want to examine flight. I, we really haven't done flight this time uh, in the series at all. And we have parts, well, we have the Delta Wing for instance. I don't have procedural dynamics in here, so we're mostly working with stock parts here. And I'm just wondering how it all works. Um, I haven't done flight much in Realism Overhaul at all, even on my own. So, so yeah, let's let's try that out. And we're going to be mainly probe controlling it, I guess, because I don't want to risk any kerbals at this point while I'm just trying to play around. I hope that is a doable thing. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to have to risk a Kerbal. Let, let's, let's go look at what test pods we might have so that we don't have to accidentally kill Jeb. Here's our current uh, core of, of astronauts. Now, uh, I think I found a prime, prime suspect here. Harden Kerman. Big on courage, also big on stupidity. Sounds like great material for a test pilot. So Harden Kerman is going to be our uh, primary test pilot, and since I like names that I don't laugh at when I pronounce, I'm going to pick up Matt Kerman and Jim Kerman as well. Okay, so uh, we've hired a few more Kerbals, and Harden Kerman will be our primary test pilot. So let's go to the SPH and see what I can cook up in terms of spacecraft that can do science. I said spacecraft, I meant aircraft, of course. Well, maybe if we can get into space, that'll be quite thrilling, but I don't think we'll have the Delta V for that just yet. Now, the, my question is, do these do science? That's, that's what I'm wondering. I think I should start small, though this, this cockpit is the lighter one. Oh, these have quite a lot of reaction wheel power, wow. Okay. So yeah, basic cockpit. Just going to do it very simply right now, which means just a straight body, nothing fancy. Okay. What kind of rocket, well, what kind of engine? Let's let's just go with a normal turbofan. Ah, oh, that's good. Pratt & Whitney F100. Okay, but we need intakes and all that sort of thing. Pre-coolers, I guess, is a thing now. Uh, this is uh, with advanced jet engines, right? So we need pre-coolers. I don't know, is this... Well, that's definitely not right. Hopefully that'll do. Like I said, I haven't played around with this, so I'm, I'm just... And uh, KSP Interstellar is not installed here. I, I think there were some complications with one version of uh, Advanced Jet Engines and KSP Interstellar, but I'm not too sure if that's still an issue. But we are not going to find out here because KSP Interstellar is not installed. 
Uh, let's see now. The Delta Wing is probably our only real bet. We don't have the wing connector right now. So we're probably going to have to use the Delta Wing. I'm going to keep it simple, like I said. I just want to get my feel for things. We don't have control surfaces? Oh. Okay. So we don't have control surfaces for the wing. Might have to unlock that at some point. Um, well, we can manage, I think. We'll just have to put both canards and and horizontal stabilizers in the back. Okay, very sort of missile-like. Let's get the gear on. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, I need uh, I haven't even been in here so I have to configure the visible buttons here. So let's just have far fuse box obviously. Um, uh, let's get mech jebs delta V. I don't think we really need tack life support but that's just generally a good thing. And why don't we see the um, the ship value breakdown because this is looking very expensive compared to an actual rocket. I'd like to know what's causing that. Okay, um, I think I've uh, accidentally pulled off a piece, have I? Yep, the Delta Wing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still using an old version of the of the realistic progression light tech tree, and probably they figured out that they should put some control surfaces in with the basic level of of flight after all. Uh, I think that was a thing by the time we got rockets. So maybe, I don't know. But yeah, okay. Or they were relying on me installing procedural dynamics, procedural wings, which I haven't done. So maybe that's the problem here. Okay, uh, looks pretty pretty stable. Let, let's say we did have a thicker atmosphere. That's fine. How about Mach 1? Uh, well, Mach 1 we're not going to be doing in a thicker atmosphere. Uh, X, okay, so we're going to have some yaw issues, but that's very minor, that's, as far as instability goes, I think we can take off with that, okay, and let's say point 0.2, uh, does that get worse or better? Better, that one does at least. So we got a lot of kerosene in there. Uh, plenty of uh, thrust actually. This is overpowered by quite a lot. And so we're going to have to not use all that power otherwise we're going to have aerodynamic breakdown and Fermier space just won't like us anymore. Um, parachutes, right. Shoot model. A single shoot will be fine. We've got four of them for heaven's sakes. Honestly, I think this size should be enough. Well, uh, we might have to find out, huh? Uh, too many parameters. And that window doesn't make it very easy to adjust things. Uh, I think it was meant for a larger screen resolution. Okay, let me just double check far again after I put those on. I don't think anything uh, substantial has happened. Point three. Yeah, okay, so we've got a takeoff situation, 11 degree up angle to get off the ground. All right, and we're going to call this, well, uh, instead of going X1 and X all that, we're going to, not EDB, how about DB, Design Bureau 1, okay? So let's go with that designation, and let's not have the, why doesn't this read as a cockpit? I mean, uh, shouldn't it show up here? Well, what am I doing? I need uh, air intakes. Air intakes, air intakes are not here. I thought I was going to get the radial intakes, but I guess that's not a thing. Um, does this intake air? No. So we'll need one of these engine nacelles. Okay. Well, we'll put that... Uh, okay, this is going to complicate things. 
Okay, so I've made quite a lot of changes now. Let's see what Firmware Space has to say about it. Still alright. Let's say we're going slower. Okay, let's say less dense air. Oh, that's a new one. Roll right angular acceleration. Maybe correct it if we go faster? Okay, good. And let's say less dense air and Mach 1. Those two again. Okay. I think we can roll with that. Oh, this looks so ugly. I really want to move the wings back. And... I th we don't have as much cares. Okay, so we can go like this. And... Just not use as much of this tank. Hmm. Oh, what the heck. Okay, well let's get our test pilot on this case. Uh, not Jeb. Harden Kerman. Yep, let's see if this works. So, interesting little fact, even though I turned the plug-in off, uh, the mission controller charged me for my three hires. Uh, I, that's probably been fixed by the newest update of that. So what we need to find out is... Ooh, this looks a lot lower on the ground than I thought it would be. Uh, whether we can do, can we do science from here? Well, we can do a crew report. I guess that's a start. Uh, I don't think we've done a crew report over flying over all the biomes or anything like that. So that that could be a thing. Uh, we don't need full power on this. We probably only need half power. Looks like intake air is good, so we've got that going for us at least. Yeah, we've got some lift, okay. Alright. Strange though this plane might be, and though it might not have any controls on its wings, we are off. What is that? Oh. So, folks, uh, I guess... Uh, uh oh. Okay. Okay, so this is the problem I had before. I thought that putting the cooler here would help, but I guess it doesn't. Hmm. Let's see if I can fit, sit by gain to higher altitude. Now it's not showing overheat here, it's just making the sound. Oh, it stopped making the sound temporarily. But now it's making the sound again. So I don't know why it's making the sound for overheat when it's not overheating. And I think it's just I need to update some plugin or another. Maybe Advanced Jet Engines, the new version, won't have this problem. Okay, I just want to get past Mach 1 right now. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I... Okay, well, uh... Yeah. Looks like... Minor sawing, right. We don't have wings. Okay, and we're going down. We're at a safe speed. Let's use the parachutes. 
I'm gonna actually shut down the engine. So, I think we've got some some mods to uh, to update before I try to do flight. So yeah, um, uh, Dellinger. Dellinger had the... did it have the boosters? I guess that's where I normally drop boosters, huh? Or did I crash a Dellinger for some reason? No, I don't think I did. Well, something got dropped there. Oh, uh, there's the Vern's... Uh, the Forsetti's... Uh, was that the launch clamp or is it actually the boosters? Not too sure. Okay, well now I just want to see whether this survives or not. Harden Kerman is having the time of his life. How is he looking there? Uh, we've got a uh, raster prop monitor, though I never use it. Oh, and a uh, curb shake. Yeah, curb quake. Though again, uh, we haven't really made much use of this stuff yet. I haven't put a camera on. Uh, do we have vessel view? Plugin not installed. Okay, so we don't have vessel view. And otherwise, there's no uh, no internals to this cockpit. Strange. Anyway. Okay, sounds like we've got some sort of deployment. And we're down to safe speed though. It looks like I should move the move the rear parachutes further back. Yeah. Okay, just just checking what really survives and what doesn't. I'm gonna time warp now. You know, I haven't fallen into the ocean much here, but uh, I wasn't expecting that. Apparently the nose cone fell off. Okay. Alright, well, Harden Kerman survived. That's the important thing. Recover vessel. Well, amazingly enough, we actually got some science out of that. Uh, recovery of a vessel that survived the flight. That's that's <laughs> saying the minimal amount. Okay, uh, 0.8 science, fine. Uh, next thing I want to do is start working on a new launcher. If we're going to launch a rover to, to the moon, I, I want something heavier. I want to start developing things on the road to a possible manned landing on the moon. And so we need to start uh, building up a larger launch fleet. Um, and I want to see if I can do that without opening any new parts. So let's see what kind of engines we have at our disposal. I will turn back to flight later on, by the way. I just uh, think that we need to... I need to figure out a few things beforehand. Clearly, I, I have a lot of kinks to work out and mods to update and that sort of thing. And maybe I should toss procedural dynamics in because it might be necessary. It might not be optional. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily put... Well, for launcher, I guess the logical thing to have as a connector would be the top fairing. Unfortunately, we haven't unlocked uh, the larger fairing basis. Maybe I should do that. Let's... Hold on. Let's go back to the R&D building to see if I can uh, unlock some of the larger fairings. Someone had, that, someone had asked in the comments why I had that weird uh, 
weird way of uh, decoupling the fairing with the cones sitting on top of the payload on the lander. Of course I didn't want to do that. The reason is because I didn't have the larger fairing bases in uh, available and so that was the only option. So we, we do need larger fairing bases. Two meters really doesn't cut it though. I mean two meters very very small. Two meters. Uh, it's funny we have uh, 3.75 meter walls, but uh, we don't have 3.75 meter. Well, these these are somewhat helpful, but not quite. Yeah, but I, I guess we should unlock these now. What's the next stage up? These the uh, 3.75 meter and five meter. Well, we're gonna have to get some more signs to get bigger fairings. Alright, but uh, at least we've got uh, one step up and so we can build slightly bigger payloads. Alright, uh, back to the baby. That wasn't what I was hoping to spend my science points on, but here we are. 2.5 meter fairing base. Well, let's start with that. Right away I want to increase the size of what we're doing here and we're gonna go with cryogenic tanks going to go from uh, 2.5 meters it's gonna look a little bit like my Saturn 9 in the in the EDB series so what engines do we have well we do have the J2 so if we really wanted uh, upper stage with oomph we've got that on our road to unlocking of course the Saturn 5 which uh, as you can see is still waiting for us here it contains locked or in invalid parts I hope no invalid parts I hope it really is locked I've sh I have all the parts in the folder I just don't know if the tech tree will open them for us we've got a likely bottom stage here the RS 68A that's that's a pretty hefty hefty bottom stage we've been using this one, this is the LR87 from Aerojet, and this is on the Titan III, this is on the Delta, oops, Delta IV, and it's just about uh, 1,000 kilonewton difference, mega newton difference. So we've got that. We could do a three-stager. I'm, I'm not averse to that. Let's see now. Let's say we've got a payload of, my typical payload is alcohol. So let's do that. And we are going to try and send that to the moon, actually. That's the goal here. Eight tons, that, that's a significant expansion on our current abilities. Let's, let's go with this basis. I want to put a probe part here so that we can, you know, control things. And yeah, well that makes sense. Okay, and I need an antenna as well. And lest I forget, also a battery would be wise. There we go. Now, the RL-10As have served us and actually the real space agency quite well. So let's go with them as the first thing. And fill up this tank with the appropriate stuff. And what we want is enough to boost this to the moon. Okay, that looks fine. Next, which engine should we use for the next stage? Uh, really, second stage engines we don't have. No, we have. Yeah, we don't have too much of a choice. This is not going to... Ooh, but this would be a good top stage now. The RL-10A3s, whatever their blessings, um, they aren't quite as good as this. Whoa! My word! That is a big rocket. Okay. Well, we can go with that. 
I think. Uh, the saw, hopefully we can get the saw rocket boosters to not aim right at it, but uh, yeah, okay, that's a very robust looking third stage, yeah, hmm. Okay, I can deal with that. Hopefully, hopefully this will work out. I think with that engine uh, at the top there, what we might want is actually to go with the J2. Oh, not too many J2s. Just the one. Oh, it is a little bit wider than I thought it was. Oh, I have to remember, what does this take to light? Liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay, must remember to put some of that in. Okay, yeah. We need to be able to light this. So... How much? Nine? So let's get ten lights in. I don't like the look of this. We should expand this one out to the full 4.25 I guess we're going for here. So yeah, I mean aside from the moon, obviously we could be doing flybys, orbitals, and all that stuff for for other planets. And yes, I think this launcher will be the thing for that. J2 normally burns for 6 minutes, or I think the third stage was 8 minutes and 20 seconds. I don't think I've got to get quite there because the width of this tank is not not enough. It's only only uh, 4.25, whereas the third stage of the Saturn V was 6.6. Uh, .6. Yeah, so I'm really liking procedural parts uh, as soon as possible. I will be once I unlock the Saturn V. I'm going to start uh, sort of rebuild this series with uh, some of the newer mods. Uh, that's does it, does it really burn? Wow, it does. Okay, yet another hydrogen oxygen mix. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I get the feeling we're building one of those obscenely tall rockets again. Well, this is going to be a test, so let's let's take it in in stride here. Uh, maybe I do need to widen this out a bit. It'll look a bit weird, but I can't really see how I can avoid it. Right, so we're getting closer, but not quite there. Let me extend this. Maybe even widen this. Using the RS-68, it is 68, right? Yeah. Uh, at the bottom, I don't think we can get the full six minutes out of this stage, but I'm, I guess we're going to have to try and get as much as possible. Yeah, I think we're going to have to go with these boosters. These little ones probably won't cut it. Got a nice 2,000 fuel there. These are not even in the ballpark. Might have to go with liquid fuel boosters actually. Or stretchable ones. Let's see. I think we're gonna need bigger boosters. These are tiny little things and you know I mean they're, they're the right amount it's just that they're just really small. Time to go for the big stretchable SRBs I think. Let's get some serious business going here. Okay, so I've got boosters on, and we've got them burning for two minutes, which is just a little bit short of what the what the center engine burns for. So they'll go off, and then pretty soon after that, the first stage will actually go off, and and then we've got enough uh, delta V through the second stage to get the rest of this into orbit. So this is the plan so far. Uh, except this is all wrong but hold on a sec let's just we've got little uh, 
the little separatrons. I've only got two on each, so hopefully it's not too ba unbalanced. We'll see. We've got struts as necessary. The main cost of this vehicle is this engine. As you can see, I could pull it off. Wow, half of it. <laughs> That's half of the cost of the entire thing. So, so there you go. Uh, the good people at Rocketdyne. Yes. Getting their getting their pay. Um, so yeah, let me adjust the staging and then we'll take this out for a spin. Okay, um, I've got uh, all the staging sorted out, I think, and I'm gonna call this R1 for Rocket 1, uh, just because I don't have a good Norse deity name on hand. Let me get the, the angle on these boost it up so that we can control this. I'm not gonna go all the way because of course SES has a bit of trouble with with that. Huh. This one doesn't have the the gimbal. Okay. That could be a problem. We'll find out whether that's a problem. That's something we should learn. The things that we we don't want to learn but other things that we do. Okay, I think we're good to go. This looks like a good rocket. Let's try it. So here we are with a launch test of a rocket capable of sending 10 tons to the moon. To lunar orbit. Lunar orbit. <laughs> lunar. Oh dear. Uh, Kuro Space Kuro Program had to use the word moon to... Uh, and uh, we've got lunar orbit and... Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, that's gonna kill me. But yeah, all right, here we go. I'm trying to talk seriously about uh, space matters and instead of saying lunar, say mooner. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, here we go. Let's, uh, let's light this turkey. All right, and away we go. Gonna have to find a cool, cool name for this one, if it works. If it doesn't work, it stays to R1. We are not going to the moon. I haven't timed it. I uh, so we're not going to try to make the lunar transfer. We are just going to see if it's capable of doing so. Obviously, there's no point putting alcohol into orbit around the moon. Well, so far, so good. Gaining speed very, very well here. I'll use Smart ASS to control it rather than trying to control stick the whole thing. That way it'll give us more accurate readings. So I'm going to start the gravity turn. Let's see how stability is. Okay, smooth as silk so far. Of course, the first issue will be probably the SRV separation. Okay, breaking Mach 1 on Q, excellent. Uh, 7,800 meters is a good time to break Mach 1 as far as I'm concerned. And I would like to see 500 meters per second by 13 kilometers. So let's go further here. Not quite there, okay. Wait for stabilization. Oh, not not that. Sixty, and that's good. Seems a tad unstable to me. Of course, there's nothing preventing rolling on this. There isn't even a reaction wheel, so... Okay, that's boosters. Booster separation is okay. Not great, but okay. Oh, this burns longer than I thought it would. Oh, it's a full two minute. Okay, 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 okay. I, I mis misread that, totally. 
Um, it's two minutes after, so it's not uh, immediately after. It's halfway. Okay, that's great. All right. Uh, so, I uh, wonder how I mesh. Early in the morning, folks. It's early in the morning, and that's why I misread that. Uh, we can definitely go to 30 here. Okay, excellent. This is looking a little bit unstable, but uh, not too bad. I've seen worse. I've seen worse and gone with it. Okay, I think uh, we can drop the fairings. Okay, fairings dropped successfully. Let me extend the antenna. Antenna is extended. Okay. So far, this is like uh, the smoothest test launch of a new launch vehicle that I've done in quite a while. Actually, the, the Nova C8 wasn't bad. That was pretty good too. So at this point, just uh, taking a look at time to apoapsis, and if it's going up, I point the thing down. I really don't want to see more than two minutes on there, but uh, around two minutes is good. All systems nominal, everything looks good. Mach 8 now, 2,500 meters per second, looks like we're going to burn out around 3,100-ish. Okay. Who's stage separation? Now, that's interesting too, because now I've discovered that the separatrons are aerodynamically okay, right? Because the separatrons were like horizontal on the on the boosters, and Fair Aerospace didn't have a problem with that. So I should use the separatrons to separate the stages. I was sort of pining for the separation boosters that are in B9 aerospace and uh, thinking about installing those but sim since the separatrons are aerodynamically okay maybe I'll just go with s standard separatrons and uh, use those to push it away. Starting to install B9 aerospace parts is uh, start <laughs> will, will quickly get complicated if I continue that pattern. So yeah, a, a simple reaction wheel will probably stop this from rolling like this. And that would usually be placed on the payload. It's interesting, the, the Saturn 9 that I use in my EDB series doesn't have this roll problem. Even when it doesn't have a, a reaction wheel at the top, it's actually much better at this. Okay, still looking very stable. Can pretty much flatten out now, I think. Looking good, one minute left in the second stage and we have the Delta V we need to get into orbit. Now, if we were trying to aim for the moon, I guess it'd be alright too, yeah? Yeah, it should be fine. We'd still be aiming in the same direction. Okay, getting ready to shut it down here. I'm not trying to get a circular orbit, uh, th that would take a little bit more refinement, so our apoapsis is going to get a little bit out of hand here. Okay, so 419 to 203, and 100 meters per second left in this stage. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Separation. And we need to examine the 
fortitude of this particular third stage. It's already drifting off a little bit. Let me try and, uh, yeah, light it. Oh no, it's, it's got gimbling. Yeah, it's got gimbling. Good. Okay. Now what I want to do is test uh, what happens when it is not stable when it comes to the fuel flow. So, we are going to time warp. Still very stable. Now I don't have any gimbling on this, so I can't turn. So I'm just gonna have to wait until it's unstable. Which should be on the other side of its orbit. Because it'll be pointing retrograde, hopefully, I think. Oh, no connection. Huh. We haven't had any much problem with our flight so far, but there was a point where this thing lost connection. That's interesting. such a such a mess of a communication system uh. okay we're at our retrograde marker let's see if it's unstable right now yes very unstable okay so now we can test the relights and also, uh, we're going to deorbit this. So, uh, keep this up, and let's see if that is enough solid rocket booster power to relight this. Uh, uh, barely. Said very risky. Whoa! No, I wanted you to deorbit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, oh, it's it's because of Smart ASS. Silly Smart ASS. Okay. So, have we uh, got a deorbit yet? No. That's fine. I want to try a second relight. Okay, we're hitting the atmosphere, but now is the time I want to try and do the relight. We are unstable. I really should check where we are, but uh, let, let's just go with it. And, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, nuts. Okay, that didn't, uh, I, I accidentally tried to throttle up too quickly and uh, it shut down the engine. And when it does that, of course, that fails. Okay, well anyway, uh, this stuff is uh, going to be... I think it'll end up in the Atlantic, actually. Yeah. There'll be enough drag here to pull down its apoapsis, even if it doesn't do it the first time around, it'll definitely do it the second time around. And then it should go over Mexico and should still be able should still continue over. Might might hit the hit Florida again, but I doubt it. Should be okay. <laughs> I, I say not knowing anything about it. Alright, so we've got a little bit of debris coming back down here. But uh, I think overall the test has been excellent. So we now have a launcher that can launch 10 tons. There it is. 10 tons, 10.343 tons to the moon and to lunar, lunar, lunar orbit. So next time around I'm going to try and do something completely different which is try and launch something to a different planet. Let's see now, do we have the communication apparatus to do so? That is a good question.
What is with this G stat here? Hold on, I want to see what this G stat is. It's risky, but I'm gonna switch to it. What a mysterious thing. Oh! Oh, I didn't have a decoupler on this, is that it? Yeah, yeah, okay, so this was something for a decoupler. Well, um... No, we don't need smart. Uh, I'll turn off, off. Go away. Yeah, I can click on it. We've got electric charge. Can't imagine how I would have lost that. Well, why don't we use it, huh? What's the range on these things? Not very far, I guess. Let's activate. Uh, 50,000 kilometers. Oh, well. Well, let's just go active vessel with it. That's fine. And then we'll have the other antenna aim at uh, mission control. I don't know. Doesn't look like it's going to be very useful. Okay, so do we have another thing? I guess Pratchett Station might have a dish. Let me check that. Yeah, Pratchett Station has a doable dish, so, so this will be fine. It's tuned to active vessel, which is perfect. Last order of business for today is I'm going to take a look at the situation with the planets. And I know we're not in position for a transfer to anything. We're eventually going to catch up to Mars, let's say. And I think that's our best bet. So next episode, what I'm probably going to do is time warp all the way to a potential Mars transfer and then send a mission to Mars, a flyby. Okay, so that's, that's going to be my plan. We don't have any assets in uh, space that require monitoring, so, so this is probably a good time to do a Mars flyby without having any encumbrance. So that'll be my that'll be my thing. I'm going to try that out for the first time in the next episode. Uh, in this, the first time in this series, obviously there was the Saturn C8 mission, uh, Nova C8 mission that uh, you may or may not have watched. But yeah, next time, Mars, and I'll come up with a new name for the new launcher that is built to send something over to Mars and to the moon. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.